Tage wie heute sind natürlich ganz selten. Das ist etwas, was einen enorm bewegt, auch inspiriert. I didn't understand the magnitude. I didn't understand what the impact would be. But all of a sudden, it's here on my university campus, and it has impacted me. The moment when the local survivors and their families will see the portraits of their loved ones for the first time. That is my favorite moment. This is so beautiful. Yes, this. You can't walk into this exhibit without being completely changed as a person. It hits people and it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from or you know, your age. I mean, this is so powerful and we need that, especially in this day and age. You know, it's not enough to be compassionate. One has to act. There is a Hebrew expression, Lador Vador, from generation to generation. Art with the power to move us now and for generations to come. This exhibition is so important to Stockton. It's really tied to the central mission of the, of the university. We have the largest program in Holocaust and genocide studies in the world. Nobody offers more courses. So people on this campus immediately understood the relevance of this, of this project, and everybody came together, and it, it all worked out really well. When Marian Husson came and told me about her uncle's work, I didn't understand the magnitude. I didn't understand what the impact would be. And when she told me that it was being displayed in a museum in Austria, that doesn't impact me. And then when it was in the Reichstag, I've been to the Reichstag, wow, I could identify a little bit more, but again, I'm not sure how that would impact me. But all of a sudden, it's here in my backyard. It's here on my university campus. And it has impacted me. This exhibition makes me think about indifference my own and what I need to do to act on behalf of human beings whose lives are in danger. As I walk through heroes, I look, look at the images, I think about it, and I think about what am I doing? It's not enough just to remember. We have to do something with that memory. Uh, we have to use memory against forgetting, and uh, we have to use action against forgetting. It's wonderful to see your face because I'm your age. I know it. It's your age you can see. It's a tragic. And you as a future, you are our future. It's an amazing moment for me to meet somebody who inspires me a lot. It really, like, like dear and near to my heart. It really, like, makes me so happy to be able to meet somebody who has, like, all these feelings for the same thing I do and for what he thinks and for what I think. It just, it really, like, encourages me throughout school and throughout life, too. Das habe ich mir erträumt dass im Grunde genommen junge Menschen, die ich zeichne, das ist ja das Alter, das ich zeichne, 
dass Sie bewegt sind, wenn Sie in diese Ausstellung kommen und darüber nachdenken. Und ich habe wirklich das Gefühl, dass ich das erreicht habe. It was really sad because at school we talked about the Holocaust and what happened. So when I, when I first walked in here, I was really sad. They look at a portrait and they say, there's my brother, there's my sister. And in the very beginning, when we first had our middle school and high school groups come through, there was tremendous sobbing and crying. And I spoke to the docents and to others who were guides in the exhibit, and I said, we have to be careful because you don't realize these students are identifying with the victims, and it brings it so close to home. It kind of hurts because it could be me or a loved one that can be here. And I see in the portraits the pain in the kids' eyes that they've been hurt. I couldn't imagine dying at the age they died at. Like, a lot of them were, like, really young. And that's just really sad. For me, the most rewarding part is to see that moment in the eyes of the school children where they realize that they have agency, that they have a role in making sure that genocide is stopped, that people are treated with respect and dignity that all humans deserve, because you can't walk into this exhibit without being completely changed as a person. What inspired you to start making these? You know, I was born when these children was murdered. Oh. And so I was thinking about uh, what can I do? And so I decided to show these children who was murdered. I have to do Diese Zuwendung auch von Schülern, die zwischen 12 und 14 Jahren sind, also ich muss sagen, das bewegt einen enorm und es ist natürlich ein Feedback, dass man normalerweise als bildender Künstler kaum bekommen kann. You have to be very careful, open your eyes, open your ears and listen because it starts, all this crime start with the words, with words. And suddenly, if you don't do anything, it's too late. The fact that we have 4,000 students coming here means so much because we want our young people of today to understand these kinds of things that have happened and to be aware of what's possible. It's such an honor to have Manfred's drawings here, reminding us of what we do in our program, right, so the masters and the undergraduate program in Holocaust and Genocide Studies, but also what Stockton does um, on a larger scale in terms of liberal arts education, humanist education, educating people to be responsible and honest citizens of the world. I saw by this opening, I saw people crying and I, I was thinking about nobody has cried before for these children because they were suddenly they were gone. The parents normally were dead. Nobody knows where. And 70 years later, the people are crying. And I thought, this is very important. Ladies and gentlemen, be prepared to be moved, to be ushered through a wealth of emotion as we view the multi-award winning film, Drawing Against Oblivion. Please join me
in thanking Mr. Bockelman and all those who have helped make possible this profoundly meaningful project of historic significance and international impact. And I can say unequivocally, having been here since the founding of this institution, that this is the most significant exhibit in the history of Stockton. Thank you for all that you've done. one of, uh, and I, I will never forget this day. It's uh, unbelievable for me, emotional. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't have the words, you know. So, so I give it to you. I it was, uh, Wonderful, a wonderful day. Thank you. We have chosen an emotional approach to the story, not so analytic, but emotional, because I think it's very important also for young people to, to, that the, the story first touches the heart, and then from the heart it gets to your mind, and you get another mindset, and, and then you start asking questions and do some research. Um, and uh, get interest. Uh, that was very important for me. When we decided to bring drawing against oblivion here, I was thinking very hard about how to make the exhibit meaningful and beautiful and relevant. And so very quickly, uh, my thoughts turned to the com community of survivors and their, and their children and grandchildren, so the second and third generation. And uh, I thought, why not have portraits that are really directly linked to that community? So my students and I researched who was living around here, uh, who had a sibling that uh, did not survive. And as a result of that, we have seven portraits now that show siblings of survivors from our region. And I think that makes the exhibit very, very special. We worked with other people who personally knew the survivors and knew ones that could handle such an emotional um, process and knowing that, you know, that they would be receiving a piece of art or having their family member on display in not only this gallery space, but really it's, it's a memorial um, to these children. Um, you know, so there were a lot of factors and it was difficult, but, you know, we had you know, kind of the parameters that we needed to work with. And, you know, in the end, um, you know, we found the seven that we knew would work best, not just for Monfred's sake when he would be drawing, but also for uh, the survivors who, you know, could handle this emotional time. a portrait of my mother's little brother and uh, the first thing I said when they told me this would be here is I wish my mother were still alive to see this it means a lot that they continue they should have done that at the beginning when we had a lot of people now very few of us have left. Her dad is named after Dov or David. 
and that's where David comes from, because he was named after him. So that's your great, great uncle. Bobby's brother. Bobby's brother. Mm-hmm. Yep. When I look at them, I am thinking of my sister, my brothers, and the rest of the family. I didn't forget for a sec, not for a minute, for a second, since I was liberated. It's beautiful. Oh my God. This is so beautiful. Yes, it's... <sighs> Did it all with love. Yeah. It's a wonderful face. Oh, with love. Oh, my God. Ich kann nicht als Künstler die Welt verändern, aber ich kann den Menschen, der mir gegenüber ist, kann ich verändern. Und das reicht mir. Aber wenn es mehr sind, freue ich mich. Manfred has donated these seven portraits to Stockton University so that future generations of students can learn with them and from them. Well, I've been here for 15 years and without a doubt, this is the most rewarding day of my career here at Stockton. We had a Holocaust survivor, Silla Kowinski, who was so looking forward to the exhibit today. She's no longer with us. She died about a month ago. And the question is that she's asked, who will carry my message? Who will tell my story? And at her funeral, one of our students, Irvin Marino Rodriguez, who had traveled to Vilnius with us and traced her family story, her life story, spoke at the funeral and said, Scylla, maybe you can hear me from heaven. I'm going to carry your story, not only to my generation, but to my future, to my children. And that's the impact of this exhibit from generation to generation. <laughs>